Good evening. I certainly appreciate your patience. We'll be starting momentarily. Thank you for your patience. I now call this regular meeting of the Board of Education to order at 7.19 p.m. Please call the roll. Ms. Pearson. Present. Mr. Schubert. Here. Ms. McCall. Present. Ms. Bennett. Here. Mr. Carpenter. Here. Ms. Haley. Here. Ms. Stanford. Here. With seven present, we have a quorum. We will now take a moment of silence Remembering Mr. Kenneth McNeil, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. As we start each board meeting, it bears reminding that the mission of Rockford Public Schools is to collaboratively engage all students in an equitable first class education for a changing world. We'd like to thank Ms. Kim Pedersen and Aaron Hill who are working behind the scenes to produce the board's broadcast via YouTube live stream and Comcast Channel 20. I wish to welcome Superintendent Student Advisory Council, Representative Habiba Kamel, from Guilford High School. Applause 
We will now celebrate the outstanding contributions of our students and staff. Ms. Stanford, it's all yours. Thank you so much. I see the RU pathway. Should, should I read those first or just? It's first on the agenda is why I'm asking. All right. Well, as you can tell, we have a packed house tonight because we are going to celebrate our Rockford University Education Pathways Scholarship recipients, which is my favorite year of the night every single year. This is like my Christmas. I really enjoy it. So the Rockford University Education Pathway Program has been an absolute game changer for Rockford Public Schools in developing and recruiting the highest quality teachers to RPS and is starting to receive national recognition for success and innovative approach to teacher recruitment and development. The Education Pathway Program has produced 17 teachers for RPS 205 classrooms for the current school year. We have 14 students who are currently completing student teaching in our classrooms and ready to graduate, and another 53 students working towards licensure in varying stages of college. Today, we are excited to announce the 22 new RPS seniors who will be joining the Rockford University Education Pathway as scholarship recipients. I want to thank the following people who make this program a success. Their tireless efforts and engagement in the Pathway program or would have made the RU Pathway program one of the best in the country. From Rockford University, I'd like to thank Dr. Kelly Munson, Dr. Annie Badu, Megan Frankfather, and Zach Botham. Our amazing Pathway teachers who without none of this would be possible, Greg Kirchhoff from Auburn, Catherine Plessner from East, Tia Lajonica from Guilford, Nicole Frazier from Jefferson, Samantha Wright and Kim Campbell from Roosevelt, and our equity team members, Ashley Thomas and Vicki Gartner. Without them, this work would not be possible. And now what we're really here for is let's celebrate some amazing students. So I'm gonna call the students up. When I call your name, if you'd please come up to the front. Uh, I'm gonna ask everybody to hold applause till the end, and then let's celebrate everybody together in one big group. So from Auburn High School, Studying elementary education, we have Abigail Cannon. Ayana Tomzak, studying elementary education. Anna Sweeney, elementary education. Leono Batista Cortez, bilingual elementary education. Nikea McFadden, elementary education and early childhood. From East High School, we have Alexis Herrera, elementary education. Amaya Quiones, special education. Hannah Henricks, elementary education. Caitlin Hammock, deaf and hard of hearing. Rosalinda Diaz Tovar, world language Spanish. Samantha Ramirez, bilingual elementary education. Sierra Phillips, social worker. From Guilford High School, we have Carol Vega Hernandez, bilingual special education. Kirby Ortega Rojas, bilingual elementary education. Mackenzie Parson, elementary education. Nashalee Rangel, bilingual elementary education. Rayon Razik, chemistry. Samantha Mosny, theater. From Jefferson High School, we have Dayanara Sandoval, special education. Haley Goodall, elementary education. And from Roosevelt High School, we have Isaiah Kenyon, early childhood education. And Madison Halpin, early childhood education. Students of Cohort 8, we are extremely grateful that you are entering in this journey to become teachers with Rockford Public Schools, and we cannot wait to welcome you back into our classroom as certified teachers. We look forward to your journey. Thank you.
Moving right along, we'll move on to our recognitions. Good evening. Tonight, we're excited to honor Rockford Public Schools outstanding students, coaches, and teachers and celebrate their great achievements. Please come up to be recognized when you hear your name or your team called. The Auburn Knights Scholastic Bowl team had an outstanding year. They were crowned regional and sectional champions and qualified for the IHSA State Tournament. The following students were part of this team. Olivia Jones, June Shields, Brielle Rock, Juan Lin, Sophia Blomberg, Luke Snyder, and Mahi Shaw. The coaching staff this season are head coach Navigay Abel and assistant coach Linda Green. The Knights started strong at state but came up short of a title. A great job by everyone. A field of over 600 wrestlers from 160 schools across the state competed in the Illinois Elementary School Association State Wrestling Finals at the NIU Convocation Center last month. <clears throat> Two of our middle schoolers advanced to state. Sebastian Abwe from Lincoln Middle School made it to day two of state. He went one and two. David Cannon from Flynn Middle School went 0 oh and two against some tough competitors. Good job, you two, and their coaches on a great season. Auburn High School students, Simon Power and Kai Holdman, are part of an award-winning robotics team. Last month, they traveled to the Rockford Robotics, with the Rockford Robotics team to the Northern Lights Regional Competition in Duluth, Minnesota, where they were awarded the Excellence in Engineering Award. Kai is in his third year with Rockford Robotics, and Simon, an exchange student from Germany, is in his first year on the team. Simon is the operator and integral member of the drive team. He also works a great deal with programming, design, parts manufacture, research and testing, and helps with the team website. Kai serves varied drive team roles and is a lead design engineer, technician, CAD CAM designer, and CNC operator parts manufacturer. He knows the robotics robot backwards and forwards and is a jack of all trades in the bot shop. Congratulations. Lucas Smith, music teacher at Rolling Green Elementary School, recently defended his dissertation and has officially earned the title of Doctor of Musical Arts. Congratulations, Dr. Smith. Jason Judd and Iga Pachalska, art teachers at Auburn High School, have been named the recipients of the prestigious Art Educators of the Year Award by the Rockford Area Arts Council. They demonstrated exceptionalism in education through leadership, mentorship, and by spearheading transformative student-led projects. Mr. Judd and Ms. 
Pachalska dedicated their efforts not only at Auburn, but also in an after school program at Fairview Boys and Girls Club, fueled by the city of Rockford's Regrow grant. Their innovative teaching methods and dedication to nurturing individual artistic expression have left an indelible mark on the community. You're not here. Congratulations to the class of 2024 Golden Apple Award recipients. Flynn Middle School eighth grade ELA teacher, Kara Wolf was one of those winners. She believes setting ambitious expectations is central to student success. Kara loves teaching and wants to create an inclusive environment in which students feel seen, heard, understood, valued, and validated. She created Flynn's first family book club encouraging students, families, and staff to develop and share the love of reading. <laughs> Kennedy Middle School special education teacher, Michael Davis was another Golden Apple Award winner. <laughs> Mike says his classroom is an empath empathetic zone where students are free to make mistakes, learn from them, and develop their potential, all accompanied by joy and laughter. He learns the languages necessary to communicate with each student, from sign language to positive clicking noises to pictures. Mike says his approach to teaching aims at shaping pupils into well-rounded individuals who can navigate their own path in life. Lewis Lemon Elementary School principal, Alicia Jones, has, re has received the Horace Mann Reaching Out and Building Bridges Award from the Illinois Principal Association, Kishwaukee Region. This award is designed to recognize those displaying an outstanding effort in creating partnerships between schools, principals, associations, and organizations for the betterment of all. Mrs. Jones is passionate about making positive impacts in her school and community. She grew up on the same street as Lewis Lemon and harnesses her connections with local stakeholders to make long lasting changes. She assumed the principalship in a building with a chronic absenteeism rate over 80%, a mobility rate four times that of the state average, and nearly all students reading below grade level. In her first year, she led programming that increased attendance rates by 25%. She. <laughs> She made staffing changes that drew more veteran diverse instructors. She also implemented SCL strategies focused on data-driven decisions. This year, in the first month of school, major behavior referrals decreased nearly 90%. While there is still much work to do, she's committed to success for her scholars and families. Way to go, Principal Jones. Let's give a big round of applause for all our recognitions. Congratulations, everyone. Is that it, Ms. Stafford? Yes, sorry. Thank you. That's You're it. welcome. The board will not... Will we are now on to the petition and communication portion of our meeting where we invite. My apologies. Principal Shippert. Yeah, we did. I'm sorry, Principal Shippert. We certainly appreciate all of your efforts. At this time, we will have a presentation from, for, from Roosevelt by Principal Shipper. Okay. I have I have a very loud voice. Anyways. No, but you didn't. I know. We are a non-traditional educational center 
that focuses on the individual student and the intentional intensive supports that they need to be successful. Tonight, our staff and students will share with you a glimpse of an individualized, engaging learning experience with supports for academics, physical and social emotional needs. Good evening, my name is Dustin Prince and I'll present a very brief summary of Roosevelt's theory of action. Though I'm currently an assistant principal at Roosevelt, I was a teacher there for several years and had the distinct privilege of living this unique model alongside my students in the classroom. For many of our students, academic failure with traditional approaches to education has been the norm for years. What the Roosevelt model seeks to accomplish is nothing short of reigniting a dying fire. Because the reasons that fire is dying is so are so complex, our staff must adopt a complex strategy. We must seek to build trusting relationships so our students feel safe. We must adapt instructional approaches and curricular design to align to the student's interest, engaging them with problems that are real to them in the context of projects that reach across disciplines. It requires our staff to learn as much as possible about the student's struggles in order to connect them to resources specifically targeting their individual needs. All of this requires us to be flexible enough to create what might be considered individualized learning plans for every student. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Green, uh, Roosevelt English teacher and 2022 Golden Apple recipient. Congrats, Mike and Carol. Um, Roosevelt is a highly specialized, centrally located school with a naturally diverse population. We magnet students from all four RPS high schools, including other specialized programs like Gifted and Kappa, Rockford's private schools, and even students living outside the district. In short, we can and do teach pretty much anybody in a way in which traditional schools cannot. Once a student falls behind in a traditional model, it can be an insurmountable obstacle to overcome by the end of the semester. We help counteract that. Our students face a slew of challenges to their education. We have transient and homeless students and students in foster care. We house teen parents. We have students who are chronically truant for valid reasons. Some of our students have struggled with substance abuse and mental health issues personally or within their family. We have students who have faced significant repeated and catastrophic trauma. Some have little or no parental support at home. A large number of our students have to work full time or third shift to provide for themselves and their families. During COVID, many of our students sacrificed their own education to make sure that younger siblings could be online. We also cater to students who work better independently, need more one-on-one -on -one teacher interaction in smaller classes, or simply do not learn well or effectively within a traditional classroom model. No two learners are the same and one size does not fit all. Many other RPS students would benefit from a Roosevelt education and the vast majority of students are grateful that they came here or wish they would have come there sooner. Hello, my name is Diana Gonzalez and I am the student and family liaison at Roosevelt. Basic necessities of life have to be met before the student is available for learning. Roosevelt offers many available resources within our building to assist our students and their families. We offer clothing, diapers, household items, school supplies, personal hygiene products, and feminine hygiene products. Meeting basic needs and securities, including lack of childcare, have a substantial impact on students' educational journey. Child care is an additional support that we offer here at Roosevelt for our students. Sorry. Um, child care is an additional support that we offer. With offering child care for our students with the little ones, this helps them save on costs for child care. Students can focus on their studies. It's convenient, it's safe, it improves attendance and academic performance, and it reduces transportation needs as a child can ride along in the bus with the student parent. Students can have a peace of mind knowing that their child is well taken care of. Over 1,000 students have been able to use a daycare while they take classes in the 32 years that it has been open. In the last couple of years, the average student number of served has drastically increased. We offer two early childhood classes to assist parents whose child aged out of the nursery but students still need assistance. 
Our childhood program helps educate individuals at various levels and make quality education available to all. Thank you. Hello, my name is Glendia Strandon. I'm the adult education specialist at Roosevelt. In the last 10 years, we have served over 1,500 students in the adult ed program. These are students who not only had trouble with traditional high school, but maybe coming from other countries without proof of high school diploma due to political turmoil, had social emotional issues. Maybe they had to become the breadwinner winner for the family. The district program has been offered for over 50 years. I know this because my mother was an RPS high school equivalency GED graduate. She was a teen mom and dropped out at the age of 16 because there wasn't a program like Roosevelt's. Our classroom is a one-room schoolhouse, four subjects at the same time with students at different learning levels and ages. The GED test changed in 2014. They are more college preparatory, which is why adult classes are needed in the community now more than ever, with over 30,000 people 16 years and older without a diploma or its equivalency. College and career is important to RPS, and it is also important to our grant. We work very closely with the local workforce board's Elevate program. We are doing so well, ICCB, our grant administrator, reached out, and we will be used as an example for other programs around the state. I want to thank you for your time, and now I want to introduce one of our most recent graduates, Griselda Cardenas. Hola. Roosevelt offered me help to achieve and have a better future for myself and my children by getting my Illinois State High School diploma. My, ch my youngest child attended a daycare program while I attended class and then went on to preschool. At times it was a struggle due to one of my children being diagnosed with cancer. The program made it possible for me to work outside of the classroom during that time and return to finish all my courses and obtain my diploma. This would have not happened without their understanding. It was also given the amazing opportunity to obtain my seal by literacy in, Sp in Spanish. Now I'm going to translate in Espanol. Roosevelt me ofreció el futuro mejor para mí y mi hijo. Mi hijo menor aprendió el programa menor de infantiles mientras yo atendía clases y después siguió el programa preescolar. A veces era difícil porque uno de mis hijos fue diagnosticado con cáncer. El programa hizo posible para mí poder estudiar fuera de clases durante ese tiempo y re regresar a terminar mis cursos y conseguir mi diploma. Eso no hubiera pasado sin la comprensión y el apoyo. También he dado una increíble oportunidad de obtener mi sello de bilingüe en español. Gracias. Hello, I am Amanda McAllister. This is my 12th year at Roosevelt, including my fourth year as the Tier 2, Tier 3 Academic Intervention Specialist. What we do in our room is encompass the full student in order to help them the best. As said earlier, our students need the full gamut of supports. Working with them to improve their academics doesn't work unless we first meet their attendance needs and the needs of the whole student. So within my classroom, we make sure, working with Diana, that their physical needs are met. Working with our counselors, we make sure their SL, SEL needs are met, and our attendance specialist focuses on their attendance. Only after those basic needs are met can I work with our students on their academics to have them reach their ultimate goal of graduating. Through that effort, we have been able to increase our attendance rate from 69 to 73% in two short months. We have over 360 students that have received different academic interventions this year alone, with 173 of them receiving the second tier, which for us is tier 2B, and 94 of those students reaching tier 3. Through that gamut of different supports, we've had seven different aging out students who were able to finish. It took them to the very last day before they aged out, but they got it done. And we had four others who finished within a week of their aging out date. And to this point in the school year, we have not had a single aging out student who actually aged out. They were all able to finish with the supports we could give them. Hi, it's me again. <clears throat> Okay, uh, the Roosevelt model is a flexible educational framework built to deal with a variety of student needs. It fosters independence, educational proactivity, and academic ownership. Similar to the Montessori model, we follow the student and the coursework is customized to each learner's zone of proximal development. 
purposefully ascribed to guide students to success in whatever they choose to do following graduation. Each student has an individualized education catered to their skills, interests, and holistic development. Our individualization allows us to have a rolling intake, and we are constantly adding new students throughout the year and graduating others the moment they've completed their coursework. Due to our flexibility and the continuous ebb and flow of students, multiple courses are taught within the same class period, in the same classroom, by the same teacher. When students complete all assignments to receive credit for a course, they move directly to their next class, often with the same teacher. This allows students to efficiently make up lost credits without having to wait for a semester uh, to take a new course. When they're done, they move on. Students can also complete core work, coursework at an accelerated rate and earn more credits than they would at a traditional high school, which is schedule bound by a static number of courses throughout the semester. We have even had students graduate a year earlier than they would have at a traditional high school because there was no downtime in their coursework. This also translates into learner-focused philosophy that provides students needing additional support with more teacher attention and increased intervention. It also means that students who are advanced and disengaged with a pace of learning that is too slow receive supplemental and more challenging work without being beholden to other students' completion. Roosevelt teachers are able to adapt coursework to purposefully coincide with students' individual learning styles and multiple intelligences. We are experts at differentiation and incorporating organically derived project and problem-based cross-curricular assignments. Learning is less redundant, more authentic, more deeply rooted in inquiry, and more engaging for students, which in turn cultivates a passion for lifelong learning and academic success while fostering the type of applied learning that occurs naturally outside of a classroom rather than being delineated by a subject within a specific classroom. We meet students where they are and guide them to where they want to go. My name is Julie Giesen and I'm a special education teacher and an instructional coach. I'm thrilled to tell you today about how we use our makerspace for our project-based learning experiences. When a student proposes a project, our instructional coaches immediately get to, to work aligning it with the standards in all of the students' classes. These co-curricular projects engage our students in learning the academic standards and give authentic, real-life experiences. Along with the academics, our students gain invaluable employability skills, such as technical knowledge and expertise in using various tools and machines. They develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills, learning to approach challenges with adaptive and flexible thinking. They work on time management, communication, teamwork, collaboration, which are crucial skills for any successful career path. On our slide, you'll see some of our completed and ongoing projects, uh, 3D printing, um, sewing projects, cooking projects, and they're learning how to grow their own food. Thank you, Nan. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Kim Campbell, uh, Roosevelt's Academy coach. According to WTVO News, trade workers are retiring and businesses say there aren't enough skilled workers to replace them. Transform Rockford says our region has lived and died by manufacturing. It touches nearly half of all local jobs. It is driving one of the most valuable markets in Illinois and manufacturing is exploding. So it's important to grow our own talent from within. Roosevelt is committed to building our program to help fill the need for manufacturing workers. By partnering with these industries, with industries, we have begun to create a realistic working environment. Our production teacher has come straight from the manufacturing industry itself. So students are taught industry-based skills on machines that are current. The goal is that we teach the basic skills needed and offer experiences and certifications that will allow our students to transition seamlessly into a workforce that will ensure benefits and a wage that, not, that can not only support them as individuals, but their family as well. Thank you. 
Good evening, school board members and guests. My name is Nazadia Flores Alvarez, and I'm 17 years old, and I'm currently a senior at Roosevelt. When I came to Roosevelt, I was 14 years old, and I had a daughter. She was only a couple months old. Not gonna lie, I was scared, and I really just wanted to give up, but I had pushed myself and went to school. Roosevelt really helped me because they have an on-site daycare. Without that, I don't know how I'd be able to go to school and handle all the mom responsibilities that I have. One thing that I really love about Roosevelt is I get to do my work at my own pace. I don't feel rushed when I'm struggling, but I'm also able to get done ahead of time in subjects I am strong in. The teachers and staff really make a difference too. I feel like they really care about me. One time that really made a difference was when my mom passed away during my sophomore year. I was so young with the baby and no longer had my mom to go for just the mom advice and comfort. A few of my teachers really stepped up to be there for me whenever I was going through and needed my mom. At Roosevelt, there isn't just one way to do things. If I need extra help or feel like I'm behind, I can stay in class or even come back during an hour I'm ahead. Um, another example is that I love art and I've been able to use it for my assignments in other classes. Members of the board, you're looking at a success story. I've overcome so many challenges at a young age and I'm so proud of myself and how far I've made it. I'm going to be walking the stage this year and on time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing us to showcase the things that we are doing at Roosevelt. Thank you, Principal Shippard and the staff of Roosevelt. I do see Assistant Principal Amberly Black. So thank you all for everything that you've done. Um, and you're definitely making a difference. And many of our students would have just hit a dead end if it wasn't for Roosevelt. So thank you again. Let's give them another hand. Now the board is on t um, to the petitions and communications portion of our meeting where we invite the public to make comments. The board will not respond to the comments at this time. If it is appropriate, you will be contacted in a timely manner by staff. Each speaker will be allowed no more than three minutes to address the board. It is not appropriate to discuss matters that would otherwise be confidential in such open meetings. If you look to your left, you will see two digital clocks. One shows the total time allotted to public comments and the other shows the total time for each speaker. Thank you for your cooperation with these guidelines. The first two speakers would be Mr. Ricky Naylor and Elizabeth Hand to follow. Mr. Naylor. Oh, okay, it's on. Um, I want some of you board members, especially like the white board, I'm not attacking y'all tonight, but I want y'all to watch this video of uh, uh, this the Green Bay superintendent. Um, if you know, you know that, that, that this guy was superintendent of Green Bay, he must have played the game real well. So I want y'all to see that so that I'm t so y'all can understand from going forward that don't always assume that black people like me are y'all enemy. You need to watch some other ones that pretend like they're y'all friends, but they talk behind y'all back. So y'all watch that video, and you're going to see what that guy really think about white people. And you're going to say, dang, Naylor ain't nowhere near bad as this guy is. So just watch the video. It's on YouTube. Uh, Claude Tiller is his name. So watch that video. And if y'all want to get in some more deeper conversations about this racism and stuff like that, we call it code switching. Uh, Dr. Morgan, you know, and Dr. Reed, we all talk, so y'all tell us, and then we want to do something with that. Um, but anyway, tonight we want to get down to the root cause. Now, you guys, I mean, a lot of times y'all think that we attack Dr. Jared and the other administrators around here, but let me, we, tonight we're going to be honest. Well, first of all, I want to say this too. Uh, the black graduation rate, it should be 80%. So that should be y'all goal going forward. That's the state average, that should be y'all goal going forward. Not 75%, but 80% where they need to be. So you just tell these black kids, look, this is y'all goal. You need to get up there. No more just playing around, lowering it down, baby, and whatever y'all do. Now, in defense of Dr. Jared, we need to understand that this man cannot make these kids go to school. He cannot feed these kids. He cannot make them go to bed at night. 
He cannot provide good paying jobs for their families. <laughs> he can't make teachers stay in these same buildings. If they want to leave, they leave. Um, he can't make black teachers or teachers of color apply for jobs in this district. So now we, we can release him from all that nonsense and get down to business. So, but what he can do, though, he can lead, he can listen, he can learn, he can collaborate, he can put together a high-performance team to tackle these problems, and he can also create an uh, environment where we can have these uncomfortable conversations. He can, get, he can lead out there and stuff. Now, like I, was like I was telling one of you guys earlier, you guys do a lot of good things around here, but we never hear about it. We hear about it. I mean, we, like I said, we know these kids going to these schools and getting scholarships. That stuff is all good, though, but the other work that Dr. Morgan and Dr. Jerry, I mean, the doctor, well, he's doing something, too, but uh, <laughs> Dr. Reed are doing, the, they don't know nothing about that. These guys met with, this, with the, uh, so the, the leadership of the Dane County uh, human resource, the human service department. Do we hear in the paper? No. They would like to know about that because this, if this stuff keeps going the way it's going, that superintendent right there will be in the conversations of superintendent of the year. They'll start saying, oh, Dr. Jerry's doing a good thing because the other school districts around here, they're not doing this good stuff. They don't, have, they don't have people going out meeting different people like these guys they do. So let's t no, keep that in mind. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Hand, and I'm a district employee and Proud Rock Fordian. I also facilitate a youth grief group called Healing Hearts 815. We offer support to young people who have experienced the loss of a friend or family member. I am here tonight to express my disappointment with how our district has handled the loss of students and employees in recent weeks and even over the past year. During spring break, our community witnessed some of the most disturbing acts of violence we've seen. The senseless loss of life shook our community. As I watched the events unfold on Sunday, March 24th, I could not help but think of the families as well as the, as well as the staff and students who knew and loved the young man who was taken too soon. At that time, I waited for communication to district staff, acknowledging this young man's life as a member of our RPS family and the support available upon our return. That communication never came. A few days later, our community was violated again, resulting in the tragic loss of another student. I continued to monitor my email, anticipating some form of communication from the district, but once again, it didn't come. This past week, we mourned the loss of a valued employee and community member. A neighboring district released a statement on social media within 24 hours, honoring his life and service to their school community, yet RPS remained silent. Last July, we lost a young, innocent student very publicly. Less than 48 hours later, over 400 teachers gathered for the Essential Learning Institute. Sorrow filled the room as many, even those not connected with her school, they felt the impact. Despite the noticeable sadness in the room, there was no acknowledgement of the loss. Business proceeded as usual, leaving an undeniable feeling of neglect. Only after some staff inquiries did a district representative make a brief statement at lunch, but by then it was too little and too late. Grief is intricate in its nature. Those unfamiliar with profound loss often find themselves speechless, opting for silence instead of words. As someone who has experienced significant loss, I know even imperfectly expressed words are better than silence. We as a district need to do better. We must find a way to acknowledge life without fearing that we might do it wrong. I urge the district to convene the trauma response team to evaluate recent and past responses to the loss of staff and students. Additionally, I encourage the team to connect with districts that exhibit high levels of compassion and empathy when facing loss in their community. It is critical for our district to recognize the importance of timely and compassionate communication in times of loss. Silence can intensify the pain felt by our students, staff, and community. Let us commit to learning from others and improving our response to tragedies, ensuring that we honor the lives we've lost with dignity and respect. Thank you. John Tech Bradley, followed by Gina Ganganali. Good evening, uh, board members and uh, our citizens that's watching this today. First of all, I want to thank uh, Earl Dawson Jr. and Dr. Uh, Reed for blessing us. We was able to take uh, 30 youth 
and 11 adults. Mind you, I only had one or two adults, but we took them to the Chicago Museum, and that was the first time that they ever went to the uh, Chicago Museum. What I want to bring attention to is RPS 205, Live, Learn, and Play. We are touching uh, uh, Risa, uh, Kennedy, and West Middle School. We are touching elementary school. We're touching Lewis Lemon, uh, uh, McIntosh, uh, Constant Lane, Riverdale, and also uh, Welch School. This past month, one of my vans got broadside. Well, I lost one of my vans. I only had one, uh, one van to transport our kids. These past two weeks, even though I was sick, I was still transporting our kids to school. What I want you to take notice of, we taking the school kids to school, from school. We even, uh, we even had the police officer uh, ask me today if I could transport some kids to go to Kennedy Middle School because their parents was paying a Hoover driver to transport their kids. Last week, I was asked by uh, a parent and teachers at Ellis School to transport their kids to school. Also been asked by Patriot Gateway Center to transport their kids. Lutheran Church have asked me to transport their kids. When my van went down, uh, it, uh, uh, my uh, water pump went out, it cost $155 to get my water pump fixed. It cost $987 with taxes would have been $1,100 some dollars. Guess what? I didn't have to pay one red cent to get my van fixed. That validate me in the community as to what I've been doing. I even got a letter. I finally got a recognition that's nine years old from uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, um, the state of uh, state Senate recognized Brother John Tack Brennan for what he's doing in the community. I've been validated in the community by what I've been doing. What I'm asking you is to check why did uh, Renewal Turning Point didn't receive any funding for the RPS 205 Live, Learn, and Play. Why it's so hard for a grassroots organization to go through so much red tape and not qualify to do what we already doing in the community. Whether you give me any funding or not, we still going to be out here in the community helping our youth. I'm working with 30 kids. Just imagine if I had a staff, we could be helping hundreds of our kids that's missing, that's, uh, that's uh, want to get to school, can't get to school. And we also got an after school program where we got three different centers that have teamed in with me, and they not charged me one red cent to help our kids. Thank you for allowing me to speak, but I ask you to look into that, why we didn't get that RPS 205 grant. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Nina Jean Angeli. Um, I'm a member of Eliminate Racism 815's Education Committee's uh, Goal 3. We are committed to improving literacy rates, particularly among students of color and marginalized groups. Uh, we believe that fostering a love of reading is key. Um, as a high school English teacher, very passionate about that. Um, and we think that it especially needs to start in kindergarten through third grade. Um, neuroscientists have shown that positive associations with reading lead to stronger neural connections, making children better readers. Um, enjoyable stories will trigger a dopamine um, release, which will reinforce that learning circuit. And so we propose that integrating engaging activities in curriculum like read alouds, book discussions, dramatic play will help achieve this. Um, furthermore, making sure that the curriculum is culturally relevant is crucial. Um, when students see themselves reflected in the books they read, they become more motivated. So as a team, we are curious to learn and we invite the board to inform us about what messaging RPS 205 educators receive about how to foster a love of reading and cultural relevance, especially in grades K through three. We're eager to collaborate and learn about existing initiatives within RPS 205 to ensure that all Rockford children become proficient readers by third grade. Thank you for your time and your partnership. Thanks to all of our speakers. We are now on action items. Is there a motion and a second to approve item 5A? So moved. Second. 
Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Is there a motion and a second to approve item 6A? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Mr. Stan Ms. Stanford, I apologize. <laughs> yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Is there a motion and a second to approve item 6C? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Is there a motion and a second to approve 6B? Item 6B. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Just as a correction, that would have been 6C, not 6B. Oh, never mind, disregard then. 6B was the zero card administration. So I went back to 6B. We are now on to the board policies that proceed through governance committee. Board policy 2.200, types of board of education meetings. Board policy 2.220, Board meeting procedures, board policy 2.240, board policy development, board policy 4.10, fiscal and business management, board policy 4.30, revenue and investments, board policy 4.150, operational services, facility ma management, and expansion programs. Board policy 4.160, environmental quality and building of buildings and grounds. Board policy 5.220, substitute teachers. Board policy 6.15, school accountability. Board policy 6.50, school wellness. Board policy 6.60, curriculum content. Board policy 7.60, student appearance. Board policy 7.165, school uniforms. Board policy 7.180, students preventing bullying, intimidation, and harassment. Board policy 8.30, visitors to and conduct of school property. If there are no objections, will we, we will approve item 7A to 70, which include the following policies I just read off with one motion, second, and vote. 
May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Are there any policies board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. We are now on consent portion of our meeting. May I have a motion and a second to approve the items listed in paragraph eight? So Performance moved. and monitoring committee. So moved. Second. Are there any consent items in paragraph eight? that board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration. June. Letter K. I mean, Mrs. Stafford. <laughs> Letter K, please. Anyone else? Consent item K have been pulled for separate consideration. Do I have a motion and a second? Is there any discussion? Why is this? Please call the roll not pulled, my correction, on paragraph eight. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Consent item K has been pooled for separate consideration. Do I have a motion and a second to approve item K? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Stanford? Abstain. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. The motion passes the six yeses, one abstain. May I have a motion and a second to approve the items in paragraph nine under planning committee? So moved. Second. Are there any consent items in paragraph nine the board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Please call the roll. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. I have a motion and a second to approve the items in paragraph 10, Governance Committee. So moved. Second. Are there any consent items board members wish to have pooled for separate consideration? Please call the roll. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. We are now on to the closed session consent agenda including resolution authorizing dismissal of a certain non-certified education support staff, B resolution authorizing dismissal of non-certain, certain non-certified, 
correction, non-certified educational personnel. C, appointment of Diane Berogan as 10-month assistant principal assigned to Lincoln Middle School. D, appointment of Maureen Kirschman. Thank you. D, appointment of Maureen Kirschman as 12-month director, attendance com and com organization report. So moved. Second. Thank you. Are there any closed session consent items that board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Eleven D. Please call the roll on items not pooled in paragraph eleven. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Closed session consent item 11D have been pulled for separate consideration. Do I have a motion and a second to approve item 11D? So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Bennett? No. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? No. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? No. The motion passes with four yeses, three noes. We are now on to student discipline. The following students will be expelled for the remainder of 2023-2024 school year through the entire 2024-2025 school year. B0031X24, H0077X24, and H0091X24. The following students will be offered an expulsion in advance agreement for the remainder of 2023 through 2024 school year, through the entire 2024-2025 school year. H0090X24, H0094X24, and H0096X24. The following students will be offered an, an expulsion in advance agreement for the remainder of 2023 through 2024 school year through the first semester of 2024-2025 school year. H0101X24, P0157X24, P0163X24, and P0173X24. P0162X24 would be offered an expulsion and advance agreement for the remainder of 2023-2024 school year through the second semester of 2024-2025 school year. The suspensions for H0088 X24 and H0100X24 are affirmed. 
May I have a motion and a second to approve items in paragraph 12, student expulsion and suspension appeals. So moved. Second. Are there any items board members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? I'd like to have 12B pulled. 12B. Please call the roll on items not pulled in paragraph 12. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Closed session consent item 12B has been pulled for separate consideration. Do I have a motion and a second to approve item 12B? So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? No. Mr. Schubert? No. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? No. Mr. Carpenter? No. The motion fails by four no's, three yeses. We are now on to student discipline EIAs. May I have a motion and a second to approve items in paragraph 13, student EIAs? So moved. Second. Are there any EIAs members wish to have pulled for separate consideration? Please call the roll. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Dr. Jarrett, it's all yours. Well, I am absolutely honored to share my time uh, with Aviva, who has served very effectively on our superintendent uh, advisory council, and I really look forward to hearing what she has to say about her experience at this month's board meetings. Aviva, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before I begin, I would like to thank the board for having me this evening. As a Guilford senior who has been in the district since kindergarten, it is an understatement to say that I love being an RPS 205 student. In recent years, I have become part of the Superintendent Student Advisory Council, Council, which has allowed me to gain insight into the amount of work done to improve our schools and community as a whole. During my time on the council, my peers and I have communicated student feedback to improve our environment. Specifically, the council conveyed a desire for safer learning conditions, which has been reflected through the security systems implemented, implemented throughout the high schools. Again, I thank the superintendent and board for listening to the students' perspectives. Today, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude for the changes in the student code of conduct along with the revised academic calendar. First and foremost, it was mentioned that the term gang was removed from the code. As someone who heavily believes in self-expression, I feel this change was necessary and crucial to student appearance. In today's society, the word gang is associated with unpleasant relations like violence and trouble. No student in the district should feel that the clothes they wear or how they choose to convey themselves will be frowned upon and in hand reprimanded. While this revision may seem small, it will make a huge positive difference in for the students of RPS 205. In all, this alteration helps diminish a common stereotype that consumes our modern day, our modern day world. 
As mentioned, I would also like to take this opportunity to provide my take on the future academic calendar at its, as it has been a topic of discussion in our monthly SSAC meetings. As many know, the last day of school this year has been extended due to multiple snow days. As a senior, many students, myself included, found it disappointing but understandable that our last day was extended as well. The solution of starting earlier and having backup days is beyond beneficial and will be favorable to many students. Adding backup days, like Teacher Institute days in Kazimierz Pulaski, will allow students, teachers, and parents to gain a sense of certainty as individuals from all parties will be more prepared for the unexpected in the coming school year. Once again, I would like to thank the board for having me today. I have enjoyed hearing about the different ways RPS plans to improve its schools and cannot wait to see it all implemented. Thank you. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Habiba. Good job. Next on the agenda is opportunity for comments um, from board members. Are there any board member comments? Okay, so I do have a comment. Um, there is um, a town hall meeting tomorrow at Lewis Lemon. I mean, at, at Ellis. Ellis. A couple of things um, that, that I ask is if there is a request that I be present, I set my schedule on an off meeting um, of a board meeting. So if, if there is a request that I am present, uh, please do not schedule um, a meeting or agree to a meeting the week of a board meeting if I am requested to be present. So that, that is one um, request that I have. And I know that we are very committed to engaging um, with our community members, and I am in full support of that. But for the management of our personal and professional schedules, along with the additional demands of a calendar events that was set prior to, um, to offer that balance is, is an ask. And I want to um, specifically recognize uh, Dr. Sheila Hill and uh, the Women and Wealth uh, 2024 Gala and the work um, that she and Ms. Kay Horton is doing in our community, um, specifically for the advancement of African American women and professional leadership development. So I, I didn't want to go any further without acknowledging her for that. Are there any other comments? If no further comments or agenda recommendation, the board will now proceed to the organization. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I did decide that I was going to say something. Um, as people may notice, I am pregnant, and I will be going on maternity leave starting next month. So if anybody needs me, please need me sooner than later, um, as I will be taking a maternity leave. So that's all. Thank you for making that announcement. Some announcements I, I don't feel it is appropriate for me to make. Um, and that goes across the board in our district because you, there's a level of confidentiality. And so some information should be shared um, at a, from a central location um, with, of course, consent. So we will have our first board baby, to my knowledge, in the history of RPS 205 board. I said to my knowledge. So... Um, that is, uh, speaks a, a lot to uh, change and the change that could potentially be coming. So um, thank you, um, Ms. Bennett, for your service, and we definitely wish you well in your delivery and the, the newcomer, the new addition to the, your family and the board as the baby will be sharing you with us. Now, back to the um, 
the recommendation um, for board organization of the board. In order to proceed with election of, all, of officers, I ask a motion for adjournment signed I. Is there a, a motion and a, a second? So moved. Second. All in favor of the motion, adjourn, sign die, please signify, and you have already. Board pal Huh? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Board policy 2.10 established one year terms for board officers. Uh, therefore, in order to facilitate board of election officers, I move for President Pro Tem Grant Schubert to, to serve as <laughs> President Pro Tem. Is there a um, motion and a second? A second. We need a second. Second. Thank you. So I now call this meeting. Call, please call the roll. Thank you. Ms. Pearson. Present. Mr. <laughs> Schubert. Here. Ms. McCall. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Carpenter. Yes, yes, and I'm here. Yeah, no, it's just the. It's just yes. <laughs> Ms. Haley. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes, present. The, <laughs> the motion passes unanimously. I didn't vote, but I, my vote is yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I now call this meeting to order. Yes, yes. I now call this meeting to order. <laughs> Nominations are in order for the Office of President. May I have your nominations? I nominate Denise Pearson for board president. Nominations do require a second or Okay. So Are there any other nominations for president? If not, is there a motion to cast a vote for the nominee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the coordinator please call the roll? Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. <laughs> the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Ms. Pearson, congratulations. Please assume your role as president. Thank you. Let me make sure. Okay. The nominations are closed. Well, that's where I was going next. Okay. So this is up here, and this is right here. Nominations are now um, in order for the Office of Vice President. May I have your nomination? Nominate Tiana McCall. Thank you. The following um, nom individual, Ms. Tiana McCall, is nominated for vice president. Are there any other nomination nominations for vice president? If not, since there is a motion to cast a vote for nominee. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Would the coordinator please call the roll? Ms. McCall. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Vice President McCall. Please continue to serve. That extra. Election of Secretary. Nominations are now in order for the Office of Secretary of the Board. May I have your nomination? June Stanford. June Stanford have been nominated for Secretary. Are there any other nominations? Of course not. Will the coordinator please call the roll? Motion and a second. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Stanford, for your many years of service as secretary, and uh, please continue to serve until next time. Oh, we're getting. So, are there any additional business from board members? You have to do the calendar. Yes. Okay, before um, you, it's a proposed schedule for regular board meeting dates. I'll now take a motion and a second to approve the 2024-2025 regular board meeting schedule. Are there any questions? I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Please, will the coordinator please? Are there any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Stanford? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Schubert? Yes. Ms. McCall? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Now, is there any additional business from board members? If there are no further business, no further comments or agenda recommendations by the board, I'll take a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned.